Hey guys, what's up? It's Shady Green Pie, and today I thought I'd try something different. There's a new segment I'll be bringing to the channel every Tuesday in which I teach you various design tutorials. These, um, I'm not the greatest designer out there, however, these tutorials are simple, basic, and easy to follow. It's ideal for anyone that's just getting started with graphic design. So if you can see on the screen at the moment, this is what we're going to be making today. It's a Photoshop style logo similar to those of the Adobe Package products, say After Effects, Illustrator, Flash, them sort of logos. So we're going to go ahead and open up Photoshop. I'm using CS 5.1 64-bit version. Once we have this open, you want to go File, New, and create a new canvas with a width and height of 800 pixels each. We'll also want a resolution of 300 dpi. The reason we want a resolution so high is because it allows us to scale the image up and down, say if we were to print it on a t-shirt, and not lose too much quality. So go ahead and click OK. Once you've got your blank canvas, you want to go up here to View, Rulers, and then you want to click on the little ruler bit up here, drag it down until it snaps in place. And you want to do the same with the side, and that should find your perfect center point. So once you've done that you want to go ahead create a new layer select the rectangular marquee tool and now hold down ALT and SHIFT at the same time and then click and drag. Once you've created your square you want to go to your fill and um, go to your bucket fill hold it down and select gradient tool and then you want to create a gradient with a hex code at one end of 0283CD and at the other end a hex code of 004A75 so once you've got this click OK make sure it's on radial and then click and drag from the top left corner to the bottom right so once you've got that go ahead and hold control and press D to deselect it now you want to take the text tool and change the font to Myriad Pro change the style to semi bold and then change the color to a color with a hex code of 61 DABA and then you want to click here which will bring up the rest of the text settings if you haven't already got them brought up uh, the reason mine my workspace looks like this is because I've got it set on design mode so you'll have all these text settings here but normally by default it's set on essential so if you haven't got it on design mode already, go ahead and click that because it it will help us to achieve what we're trying to do. So you want to go to this one where it says AV and has the arrow left and right. You want to select that and go ahead and type minus 40. Once you've got that, click enter and then click anywhere within the screen and type out your letters. And then you want to click the arrow tool once you're done or enter nope you don't want to click enter you want to click the move tool and you want to move it to center this is why the rulers were so important because it means we're we're able to scale everything towards the center so you want to click on the corner once and then it should enlarge in the box then you want to hold shift hold down click and drag this box out to make it bigger put it back to the middle and make it to a size that you're happy with once you've got that go ahead and press enter and now double click the layer here this will bring up the layer style options you want to go to bevel and emboss keep everything up here the same apart from down put the size to 2 pixels and the angle to 90 and then once you've got that you can go ahead and click OK so that's the text for now so we'll center that properly this point is the center point of whatever the layer may be and for the, for the, in this instance we got the text so it allows us to just quickly snap it to the middle you want to take layer 1 your background layer you can rename if this if you want completely up to you but I'm going to rename it background and then you want to hold it drag it down here to the little page turning icon when that icon goes in a little bit you want to let go of the click and it will create a copy alternatively you can right click it and go duplicate layer and create a background copy so what we're going to do with this is move it down slightly if you hold down shift and drag it it allows us to move it along this this y axis or the x axis 
what we're going to focus on is just the y axis so you move it down like so alternatively you could hold down shift and use the arrow keys to move it a certain amount that you're happy with so we'll go for about do it about four times and then you want to drag this top box down until it snaps into place and then go edit transform perspective then you want to grab either this corner or this corner and drag them in until you've got perspective that you're happy with once you're happy with that press enter now with this you want to hold control go over to the thumbnail for this background copy and click and it should select the whole shape perfectly so what we want to do with this is change our secondary color to one of these blues down here so we sample that blue that should be fine and once you've got that hold down control and press delete and it should fill it in with every, any secondary color you've got so say if we went for a green held down control and press delete it will fill it with that color but for now we just want one of these blues down here so go ahead and click OK control delete and then control D to deselect now once you've got that you want to take this layer and this layer and <coughs> to select them both you want to hold down shift or control and select them it's easier to hold down control and click so click on one layer control click and then you want to take these and drag them to create a new layer so it will duplicate both of these layers and then you want to right click with both of these layers selected and click merge layers once you have this you want to hold, hold down control click on the thumbnail and it should select it perfectly like this then you want to go up to select modify expand and for this we're going to go for about five pixels and we should have something like this so you want to fill that with a nice black color remember control delete and we'll take this layer down below the background and then whilst this is still selected you want to go select modify oops select modify expand and expand this by 10 pixels once we have this we want to change our secondary color to a nice white and then hold down control delete and that should fill that well firstly it will be advisable to create a new layer drop that underneath your black layer press control delete and it should fill that and now control D to deselect and you should have all your layers so if you take turn off your background everything should be you should have this transparent selection layer uh, we'll turn the background back on for now we'll double click our white layer and go to outer glow you want to change the blend mode to normal the color to a nice black color and then adjust the spread and size until you're happy with it and I like to put the opacity around 50 so click OK uh, just for now we're going to go to the background take our paint bucket tool and fill it in light blue and this is what our logo looks like so far now you want to take the background copy the lower section which is here you want to control click and that should select it then you want to click to select the whole layer itself and then go down to here this little hand tool it may be the little um, I don't even know what that is it looks like a frying pan um, you want to get the burn tool change the brush hardness to 0% the size to whichever size you're comfortable with and then hold down shift and click and drag across it's up to you how many times you do this I think it sometimes looks better if you do it twice and then once at the top and there you go you have your logo also sometimes you may want to press control set the back color to black control delete and have it as black instead but I think it looks better with the blue so we'll keep that like that 
and it's up to you what colour you want the background you can either have it colour, gradient or you could just completely switch the background off go up to file save as or just save it as logo and you want to save it as a PNG with a PNG it allows us to keep the transparent background whereas with a JPEG it will just add in a block white background instead and that's not what we want say if we wanted to put this logo onto something else um, without having a square border around it or anything just so that it looks so that it stands out more so we want to go ahead and save the file size is a, just a little bit higher than if you were to save it as a maximum quality JPEG so now that we have that there is our logo thank you for watching and leave a comment below telling me what you'd like to see next week whether it's um, website design, YouTube design, whatever it's um, completely up to you so I want these tutorials to be based around you guys and what you want to know and I'll be sure to learn it and then be able to teach you how I've learned it or an easier way if I find out so thanks for watching and if you haven't already please subscribe